Hi there. Welcome to warm-ups for young adult singers. These warm-ups will introduce you to some basic concepts of singing and provide you a structure for how and what to vocally stretch before working on music. They're designed to be general in order to apply to singers of a variety of experience levels and to help you prepare for any number of singing activities. This could include an individual practice session, a choir, musical theater, band or ensemble rehearsal, even a voice lesson or a coaching. These exercises are not intended to take the place of vocal instruction nor give you a specific style of singing. Every serious singer owes it to themselves to work with a qualified teacher or style coach for those things. As we go, I'll use some terms that you may not be familiar with. I'll give you an explanation of them so we have a common understanding. So, let's start with the terms range and voice part. In singing, the term range is often used to describe the highest and the lowest notes that a singer can produce. It also describes the notes that are the most musically useful to a singer. And that's because some of the notes that we're able to produce may not be appropriate for our performance or for frequent use. That's why this warm-up series will be presented in a lower range and in a higher range. It's important to understand that your vocal range is not the same as your voice part. Your voice part or vocal category or voice type are commonly described with terms like soprano, alto, tenor, bass, and some others. The lower range video will be most comfortable for singers that are already singing easily as a bass or a baritone. The warm-ups presented in the higher range video will be most comfortable for singers who are already singing easily either as a high baritone or as a tenor. If you're not sure which range you should be singing in, you can ask a music teacher that knows your voice well, or you can experiment by singing along to these videos and recording yourself as you sing. Some helpful guides you can use to determine which range are best for you are one, how much strain are you creating to make a sound, and two, how much control do you have in that part of your range? Now strain is something that we can see we can hear and we can feel it in our throat. If you look, sound, or feel like you're picking up something that's a little too heavy for you, chances are high that you're straining. I'll talk more about what I mean when I say control once we get into the exercises. So issues about strain and control are different from questions like, what singer do I wanna sound like? Or what songs do I wanna sing? And that's because answering the questions of range and control have to be answered before you can choose a song or a style that fits you best. As you find your most comfortable range, you may discover that it's higher or lower than you expected. You may also discover that the range over which you have good control was smaller than you first thought. Well, guess what? That's okay. Through regular practice, your command will increase, and with it, your ability to sing with greater expression. So with that in mind, it's important to stay open-minded. How well your voice functions in a given range will change as you grow and evolve as a singer and as a person. This might lead to a change in your voice part, but that change has nothing to do with your talent or your ability as a singer. These exercises will help you train several basic vocal ideas we use in singing of every style. Since many of you are a different age than I am, I've asked a few singers that I work with to help me out with the initial demonstration of them in the hopes they will sing in a way that you can relate to more easily. When you rewatch, feel free to sing along with them. Mm -hmm.
All right. So every note my colleagues just sang had the following basic elements. First, there's pitch. This is usually described with a letter name, but sometimes we use solfege or scale numbers. Pitches can generally be described as a higher pitch or a lower pitch. There's rhythm. Now there are lots of ways to describe rhythm, but for our purposes, let's think of it very basically as how notes move through time. There's loudness. Loudness is sometimes described by the general term dynamics, or by the more specific Italian terms piano, which means softer, and forte, which means louder. We can also describe increasing our loudness with the term crescendo, and decreasing our loudness with the term decrescendo. Vowels are the building blocks of text. How we shape or color a vowel has tremendous influence over the ease and expressiveness of our singing. When we link notes together, we can add two other elements as well. Articulation is how we connect notes through musical emphasis. Now this is not the same as diction or pronunciation. Common terms for musical articulation include legato or smooth, staccato or separate, and things like accent. But there are lots of other terms as well. Consonants can also aid or challenge a singer's articulation. There's also tempo, which is how fast or how slow we pace a musical idea. Now it's your turn. We're going to start first with an exercise that practices how we start and sustain our sound. The Italians call this articulation a portato, which means to carry through the length of the note. We're going to start down here. A couple of things I want you to think about as we go through this. The onset of the sound shouldn't be hard. Oh. It also shouldn't be too weak and breathy. Oh. You want to make sure that the vowels are as you intend. Oo should sound like the word who. E should sound like the word we. And ah should sound like the word hot. You also want to make sure there's enough space in your mouth for your sound to come out. A good rule of thumb is if you can fit two fingers between your upper and your lower teeth, chances are your mouth is open enough for singing. Too much, too little, just right. Lastly, you want to every now and then check in with your breath. Make sure you're not giving too much away, but also that you're not holding too much in. If you put your finger up to your mouth while you're singing, you should feel that your finger is a little warm and that air is moving past it. Not quite like you're going to blow out a candle, but enough that the air is moving. So, with those ideas in mind, let's get started. Breathing in, ears over the shoulders. Oh, set of sound. Oh, e, ah. Staying tall. Oh, e, ah. Check your breath. Oh, e, ah. Oh, e, ah. Keep going without me. over the shoulders. Make sure the vowels are what you want. Ooh. E. Ah. Great. Space in the mouth. Good. Easy breath. Head back down. breath in. Balance your onset.
Check your breath. Check your space. Ears over the shoulders. Couple more. Let's move on to exercise two. The goal of this exercise is to move from note to note as smoothly as possible. The Italians use the term legato for this articulation. The exercise is going to happen in two directions and on two vowels. First, we'll go up on an E vowel, then we'll go down on an U vowel. As you sing, you want to feel as smooth and sliding an articulation as possible. The notes should be accurate, but they should be very consistent and smooth. Your vowel should also be consistent from note to note as well. Sing with a loudness that feels like a three or four if your loudest volume is a ten. Other things to keep in mind as you sing up and you sing down, don't try to reach for the high note press down for the low note. Keep all notes feeling like they're in the middle. Also, can you rotate your head or can you roll your shoulders while you're singing? That'll make sure no extra muscles are locked that shouldn't be. And then just like in exercise one, check in with your alignment to keep your ears over your shoulders. Make sure you have two fingers width of space in your mouth and take time to take an easy breath. Got that all? Let's start with our first exercise. Nice work. This next exercise practices the articulation known as staccato or short. But I'm going to warn you, it's going to feel a little strange in terms of where we're doing this in your range. 
We're going to use this staccato figure to practice warming up our falsetto or our false voice. This is a sound that we don't typically use in public as a tenor, bass, or baritone. However, stretching the muscles that produce the falsetto and warming the voice up in this production can be very helpful in balancing our overall sound. We're gonna start about here. And what we'll do is you can hear the sound that I'm using is very breathy and it's very quiet but I'm focusing on that crisp, even, balanced beginning and a short, detached sound until the last two pitches. Let's try this together. Breathing in. falsetto going even though we're lower. You'll notice that our goal was to stay in that falsetto quality for the entire exercise. If as you try to do that, the, voices sound, the voice sounds a little rough or the pitches don't come out clearly, that's okay. Remember, this is a very specialized stretch to work a specific group of muscles. Okay, so this next exercise helps us practice getting louder or the crescendo and getting softer the decrescendo. Now your loudness is going to be relative and one of the ways you can know how far you've gone is by what your vowel clarity sounds like. You want it to always remain clear and without any strain. If it gets too fuzzy or too breathy, you've probably gotten too quiet. Similarly, if the pitch changes or if it gets a little bit too strident, you've probably gone too far. When you first start this, you may find that the quietest sound that you can manage is maybe a 4 out of 10, with 10 being the loudest that you can sing, and that the loudest you can go is maybe a 5 or a 6. That's okay. With practice, this range will become larger. This is also a good time for me to mention vibrato, which is a steady but small oscillation or variation of a pitch center. Now, some singers have a more present vibrato than others, and that can be for any number of reasons. There are also musical styles which have an expectation for you to either take vibrato out or put vibrato in. For purposes of this exercise, I want you to allow your vibrato to be present from beginning to end, but don't force it if you don't have one. The shimmer or the spin of the vibrato should remain fairly consistent in speed and range as you get louder and softer. So let's get started. We'll crescendo and then we'll decrescendo and we're going to do it on an oo vowel as in the word who, two fingers of space. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
on your own. Ooh, a little louder, a little softer. Good alignment, breathe in. A little louder. Good. Keep that vibrato consistent if you have it. So exercise number five is where we start combining different elements that we've already exercised in previous stretches. It can be a real balancing act. The first part of the pattern, we want to focus on two things. The bottom note should be relatively louder than the higher note, and we also want to make sure there's a legato uninterrupted leap from one to eight. As we come down, we want to make sure that we're accurate in our pitch, the consistent of the vowel clarity, and that there's a slight meso de voce or crescendo de crescendo action on each note. Also, if your vibrato is present, make sure it's present throughout. And then with everything else, you want to make sure you have physical ease and mobility, that your mouth is open, about two fingers width apart. So I'll demonstrate it once, and then we'll shift it into a key where we can get started for your voice part. special note for you guys who are singing in your lower range. Every note we sing should be properly balanced, but there are places in our range where too much imbalance can make things a little difficult. For a lower voice, that can happen as soon as this note, A, and it becomes more noticeable as we ascend. With practice, you will come to recognize where these notes sit in your range, and you'll be able to anticipate the choices you need to make to balance your voice. Ways that you can do that are to double your awareness and your commitment to your choice of loudness and vowel clarity. As you first practice this task, you may struggle and feel a bit limited in how much you can crescendo or decrescendo. Be patient with yourself. I may play these exercises a little bit higher than you can sing. Don't be a hero. Only sing as high as you can and as low as you can without strain. Let's try a couple together. Lower, lower voices. You'll hear me let you know when a good place to stop might be. And upper, lower voices. You'll hear me tell you when to keep going. Similarly, when we come back down, I'll encourage the upper, lower voices to stop before the lower, lower voices do. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Says this might be your last one. on 
the top. Lower, lower voices. Come on back in. on the top. Space in the mouth. Last one for the upper lower voices. So there you go. Five warm-up exercises to get your voice going. Keep in mind, warming up isn't just about singing scales and patterns over and over again until you're done. It's about practicing the adjustments you need to make in order for your voice to create a vocal idea and recognizing what it feels like when your body creates that idea well. Here's how you work towards that. Be prepared to ask yourself very specific questions about these vocal ideas while you're singing. At first, you may not be sure how to accurately answer these questions, and that's okay. Becoming familiar with how you hear and feel your own voice is as much a part of developing your technique as any sound you might create. You might want to record yourself while you warm up and then listen back. You'll quickly notice that how things sound on the outside are different from how they sound to you on the inside. Allow yourself to focus on quality rather than quantity. These warm-ups should take you only about 10 or 15 minutes, maybe even less once you get familiar with them. They're not designed to take you to the extremes of your range or your loudness, but they will challenge you to get the basics right and have you feel ready to start more specific musical activity. Thanks for watching. I hope these help you in your regular practice. And whatever you do, keep singing.